Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the robotic stage. Our next session is Geminoid, Avatar and the Future Society. And we will be joined remotely by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro, who is a professor of Department Systems Innovation and visiting director of ATR at the Osaka University. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I hope uh, you can hear me well. Right. Um, so thank you for inviting me to this conference, and this is my great honor. But unfortunately, I have a very important role in my university today, and then you know I couldn't attend to the conference by myself. Therefore, I have sent the, uh, my avatars. So the uh, avatar is very convenient. You know, we can work anytime, anywhere by using these avatars. So please enjoy the avatars talk, and then. I'll be back after the avatar's talk, and, and, and I'm going to talk with you again. So please enjoy the avatar's talk. Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to be able to speak at this traditional international conference on robotics. So thank you for inviting me. Today, I would like to speak under the title of Avatar and Future Societies. As shown on this slide, I'm promoting a number of projects in addition to the universities and research institutes. I'm the project manager of a Moonshot R&D project, the thematic project producer of Expo 2025 Osaka Kansai Japan, and CEO of Abita Inc. However, these activities are all aimed at the realization of avatars. And through all these activities, I'm trying to realize a future society where avatars and humans coexist. So that is what I would like to talk about today. This figure shows my R&D history of interactive robots. 20 years ago, I started researching and developing robots that interact with people. In the research and development, I have developed autonomous robots called Robobee and Erika. At the same time, I have also developed remote-controlled robot avatars. Initially, the purpose of the development of Avatar was to collect data for development of autonomous robots, but it turned out that Avatar themselves were useful for, to society, and since then, I have promoting research and development of both autonomous robots and Avatars. These are the interactive robots we have developed so far. Erika on the left is a very human-like robot, Android, that uses gestures and rich facial expression to communicate with humans in a human-like manner within a limited situation and purpose. I'm proud that it was the most human-like robot. Komu on the right is a popular interactive robot developed mainly for interaction with children. By coordinating two robots to interact with humans, it is possible to continue dialogue without disruption. Based on the technology of autonomous robots that I have cultivated so far, I'm currently working on the research and development of avatars. Now let's talk about avatars. The origin of avatar is not clear, but some 20 years ago, I propose a very simple robot avatar that combines a video conferencing system and a mobile platform. Such avatars were booming around 2010, and many startup companies were selling them all over the world. But after 10 years, most companies stopped selling. Society didn't accept working remotely. However, due to corona, Working remotely has become commonplace. I expect that the use of avatars will start in earnest from now on. 
aside from the avatar robot boom, I myself was steadily advancing research and development of avatars in the laboratories. In 2006, I developed Geminoid, my own avatar. After that, we made further improvements, and in 2022, we developed the sixth generation Geminoid. This is me now. What I'm good at now is gestures that surpass Professor Ishiguro's. You can give a presentation with a much richer gesture than the person himself. Also, if I use a camera with an AI function, I can have a better perceptual ability than humans. In other words, we avatars will evolve further while possessing expressive and perceptual abilities that surpass humans. This is Kono Taro Digital Minister's avatars. A very busy digital minister can use avatars to perform official duties anywhere, anytime. In addition, by having the digital minister himself use an avatar, the merit of using avatar can be widely appealed to the world. Furthermore, we can work on regulatory reform regarding the use of avatars. Also, Avatars are not just human-like. This is a minimal design avatar that doesn't make you feel age or gender. Many elderly people prefer interacting with minimally designed avatars that allows them to interact with imaginations rather than avatars that closely resemble humans. This minimalist avatar is called a terenoid. The demonstration experiment using terenoid at facilities for the elderly are underway around the world. This photo shows an experiment in Denmark. As in Japan, the elderly interact in energetically with terenoid. We are trying to realize human avatar symbiotic society using these avatars. To achieve that, we are working on the Moonshot project. The Moonshot project is a project established by the Japanese Cabinet Office to research and development technologies that should be realized by 2050. The first goal is to realize a society in which people are free from the constraint of body, brain, space, and time. That is to realize a human avatar symbiotic society. More concretely, we want to realize these avatar uses shown in this figure. In the Moonshot project, the avatar is called the cybernetic avatars. By using cybernetic avatars, anyone including the elderly and the people with disabilities will be able to freely participate in various activities with abilities beyond ordinary people while expanding their physical, cognitive, and perceptual abilities using a large number of cybernetic avatars. Anyone will be able to walk and study anytime, anywhere, minimize commuting to walk and have plenty of free time. Since the project started, we have been working on many demonstration experiments. Here is an example of using avatar in kindergarten. Even though the kindergarten was unable to receive visitors due to the coronavirus, avatars were able to connect children with elderly. Both children and elderly looked forward to interacting with avatars every day. Even in supermarkets, we have demonstrated that various interactive services can be provided using avatars. This is an example of an amusement park. Six avatars placed in various locations are operated by four operators to provide interactive services to visitors. Here is an example of a bakery. 
I also used my avatar to sell bread. Children are afraid of my appearance, so I cannot sell the bread with my flesh body. But by using a cute avatar and talk to the children in a cute voice, I was able to sell a lot of bread. This represents a very important future of avatars. We can walk as a different person in the real world. We can experience a different life with our avatars. We call this world the virtualized real world. In this figure, the horizontal axis represents real world to the virtual world and the vertical axis represents real name to anonymous. Normally, we are active in the real world with our bodies. The advantage in the real world is that we can make money, but the disadvantage is that it is difficult to recover when we fail. On the other hand, in the virtual world, that has spread after the internet. We often act anonymously, and even if we fail, we can act as someone else. However, making money is not easy. With avatars, we can create a world that combines the benefit of both of the real world and the virtual world. We call that world the virtualized real world. In the virtualized real world, we can become various selves using avatars and act freely. Such avatars directly fulfill an important human purpose, interactions. Avatars connect people each other. In this way, avatars will allow us to understand each other even more and explore new possibilities for human societies. Such avatars will evolve further by incorporating AI technology. However, avatar will not be replaced by AI because it is a means to realize the human purpose of the connecting with people. I'm also working on the social implementation of such avatars. I started an avatar company called Abita and ran it as CEO. An important management policy at Abita is not to develop robot avatars. It is difficult to develop a market with robots. Therefore, we will first develop the market with computer graphics avatars. With computer graphics avatars, anyone can walk anytime, anywhere using a tablet or a smartphone. After developing the avatar market, we will replace high-value added services with robot avatars that have a stronger presence. This is the CG avatars developed in Abita so far. Various avatars such as the cartoon avatars and realistic avatars can be operated in real time with a normal camera and PC. So we can work with CG avatars like this. A number of Japanese companies have already adopted Abita avatars. If you go to insurance marketplace, Hokkien Chiba, which sells insurance on the internet, you can buy insurance from avatars. Rawson, a convenience store, offers a service that combines avatars and automated cash registers. In the future, we would like to create places where we can experience using various avatars. In the near future, we would like to realize a human avatar society, a society in which more people can be active through avatars. Thank you for your attention. So thank you for your attention. I strongly believe that the avatar technology will change our life 
as the uh, Uber changes the uh, taxi system, right? So everybody, you know, by using the Uber system, everybody can be a taxi driver. The same things happens for the arbiters. By using arbiters, we can walk anywhere, any times, any countries, right? And so the arbiter the, will develop the uh, new te uh, technological societies. Thank you for your attention. If you are interested in my avatar technologies, uh, please give me a message. Thank you very much.